I love crochet washcloths. They are a project that works up really quickly and they give you that feeling of accomplishment and satisfaction that is so incredibly rewarding. However, I wanted to come up with a crochet washcloth design that had a lot of intention behind it, such as the color. I wanted to pick specific colors that gave off the vibe I was looking for, were aesthetically pleasing, <clears throat> and would also look good in my kitchen, and not just colors that look good on the shelf in the store. I also wanted to have a lot of intention behind the stitch that I used. I wanted a stitch that was solid with no holes, one that was flowy and drapey with a touch of texture for its utility. I think you're going to love the design that I came up with. I'm calling it the Crochet Cottage Washcloth. We are playing with a couple basic Tunisian crochet stitches. So if you have never played with Tunisian crochet before, this project might be a great way for you to give it a try. Hi everyone, my name is Tiffany. On my channel, I try to make the world a better place through crochet. Together, we do crochet tutorials, work on projects, do crochet basics, and we often support crochet charities to help lift up people throughout the world. So thank you so much for being here. All right, the pattern for this crochet cottage washcloth, there's a link for it in the description section below. All you have to do is click on that link and it'll take you right to it. Next, we're gonna go over what materials that I used to make this washcloth. All right, so the materials that I used for my crochet cottage washcloth that you see right here is Hobby Lobby's I Love This Cotton. I loved these color palettes. This particular variegated color is Rosemary Cottage. I love this cotton. I wanted to use a solid color for the demonstration though, so that way any of the color changes wouldn't distract from the stitches that we're doing. I wanna make sure that everything is very clear and clean and easy to follow along with. The, this color right here is bruschetta, and I really thought these colors complemented each other very well, and I'm excited to see this color pairing. I was able to make both of these washcloths with one skein of yarn. And this has approximately 180 yards of yarn. It's a size four weight. The crochet hook that I'm using is a Tunisian crochet hook. So one of the really, really long ones. It's a six millimeter. Just make sure that whatever crochet hook you're using is long enough to make sure that all the loops across will fit on your hook. That's the most important part. We also have the scissors and yarn needle tapestry needle to weave in any of our ends. I'm going to have links to everything you see here in the description section below if you would like to use exactly what I'm using. Otherwise, go ahead and gather your materials and let's get started. We're going to begin by chaining. So starting with a long enough tail for us to weave in that end at the end of the project. Take our Tunisian hook, go ahead and grab that loop. And we're going to chain, like a regular crochet hook, total of 35 chains. One, two, three, four. Now a big tip with Tunisian crochet is you want everything to be loose. You're going to be creating stitches that are naturally going to want to be tighter and more dense. And if you're already starting with a super tight stitch, just imagine that super tight stitch getting tighter and even more dense. So having a loose crochet stitch throughout this project is going to be very important and it's going to just make things so much easier for you. Thirty-four and thirty-five. All right, for row one, we're going to pick up a loop from each chain, skipping the first loop from our crochet hook, finding the second loop, just going underneath one yarn, one loop here, gonna yarn over and pull through. Then next chain, underneath just one loop, yarn over, pull through. Next chain, just one loop, yarn over, pull through, and continue across. You're going to end with a total of 35 loops on your crochet hook. That's what our goal is. All right, and last chain. Great, all right, so we have 
all 35 loops on our crochet hook. And now for row two, we're going to do our return pass. What you're gonna find is every odd number row, we're going to move forward and create loops that will change different stitches. And every even number row is just gonna be the return pass. So for row two, and what I like to do is I like to take all of my loops and I kinda like to crowd them up to the front. For me, it helps uh, as I'm going across. If you would like to spread them out, you do whatever works best for you. So we're gonna start just by yarning over and only pulling that yarn through one loop, just one. That's going to be considered our chain, okay? Then we're going to yarn over and pull through two loops and that's the actual stitch. For the rest of row two, you're going to yarn over and pull through two loops. Yarn over and pull through two loops. And for me, by kind of bunching everything up, it's kind of like a Pez dispenser <laughs> where it's a spring activated where all the stitches are just kind of ready to bounce, ready to go. So yarn over, yarn over. There we go, got the hook to catch that yarn. And then pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. There we go. All right, and finishing up row two. And there we go. Lay this down so we can see what we're working with. Oh, we got all these really beautiful vertical lines that we are going to be utilizing to work into for row three. All right, with row three, we are actually going to be making the Tunisian moss stitch pattern. It's so pretty. All right, let's go ahead and begin. We're going to start by inserting our crochet hook underneath this second vertical line from the side. Go under the line, yarn over, and pull the yarn through that stitch. Now that's a Tunisian simple stitch. Next, we're going to do a Tunisian purl stitch. So I'm gonna take this yarn and I'm actually gonna bring it down. I'm gonna have the crochet hook be on top of the yarn. I'm going to insert my crochet hook into the side of that next vertical line. And then I'm going to yarn over from below and pull the yarn through that stitch that way, and that creates a purl. The repeat pattern for row three is simple stitch, purl stitch, simple stitch, purl stitch, back and forth, alternating all the way across. So next stitch, that vertical line, the only line we're working in for this pattern, we have the yarn above, insert crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, remember, give it room, nice loose stitches. Next stitch is purl, so I'm gonna bring the yarn down, insert crochet hook through, and pull that yarn through. So up, simple stitch, down, purl stitch. Up, simple stitch, down, purl stitch. All right, repeat across and I'll meet you at the end. Keep those stitches loose. At the very end of row three, after doing the purl stitch, we're going to end with two simple stitches one and simple stitch at the very end we're actually going to put it under two loops so we see that last vertical line but at the very edge we actually want to look at the side and if you look at the side you see a chain you see an actual chain we want to put our crochet hook underneath the two loops on the side for that chain Go ahead and remove so I can show you again. So this is what it looks like from the front. Just a vertical line, the very end, the very uh, very edge of the work. If you turn it, 
you see the chain, you see that V, going to take our crochet hook and go under both loops, under that V, and then yarn over and pull through. And that is what we do different for the last stitch of this Tunisian pattern. Just want to make sure I point that out very clearly because it's easy to skip that part. It's easy to just work behind that one vertical line, but it's going to result in a different finish than we want. For row four, it's just a return pass. So I like to bunch my stitches. Be remember we begin by yarning over and just going under one loop and that is our chain. And then for the rest of the row, we're going to yarn over and pull through two loops. Yarn over, two loops. All right, I think you got it. That's it. I will meet you at the end of row four to show you what we'll do for row five. Wrapping up row four right here, finishing that off. Great, go ahead and set that down so you can see what it looks like. So cool. Okay, for row five, we're just repeating what we did for row three. In fact, the entire Tunisian moss stitch repeat pattern is just repeating row two and row three. Row two being the even number row, which is the return pass, always the same. And then row three is always going to be the forward pass where we are going to be rope or repeating a simple stitch and a purl stitch. A simple stitch, purl stitch, back and forth, all the way across. And it's always gonna be stacked on top of each other. So simple stitch on top of simple stitch and purl stitch on top of purl stitch. And what that is going to do, what that's going to create, is that beautiful line. So the simple stitches will all become this line and the purl stitches will all become the valley in between. So moving forward, we're going to go ahead and look at our second vertical line and our vertical lines will start from the bottom and just continuously go up. So second stitch here is going to be a simple stitch. Yarn is going to be up. Yarn over, pull through. Next stitch is a purl stitch, so yarn will be down. Then you're gonna enter in the side of that vertical line and then yarn over. And have fun yarning over your crochet hook, however it's easiest for you. There's really no right or wrong yarn over here, just as long as you can pull the yarn through the loop with the yarn being on the bottom. The next stitch is a simple stitch. We see that as it is elongated here. So yarn is up, inserting crochet hook, yarn over, pull through. Next stitch, purl stitch, yarn is down then insert crochet hook into the side of that vertical line, and then pull the yarn through that vertical line. There we go, that's all we are doing for the odd number forward passes, is that combination of simple stitch and purl stitch. Now it is possible as you're going along, you might be able to speed up, and it is possible that you might lose track of your order of the pattern and maybe do two simple stitches in a row or two purl stitches in a row. It will become very obvious moving forward in the pattern. You're going to repeat rows two and three over and over until you get to row 62 and that is where I stopped. And we want our last row to be a row two returning pass row, obviously. All right, now it's time for the fun part, working that simple repeat pattern. But this is gonna take quite some time to complete. Remember, whenever you're gonna be crocheting for long periods of time, to be mindful of your posture. If we just jump right into crocheting and ignore our posture, it can lead to bigger issues down the road, such as aches and pains in our necks, our backs, our shoulders, and even our arms. I've heard too many stories where these aches and pains have taken people out of commission to where they can't crochet anymore, and I don't want that to happen to you. This is why I use and tell everyone I 
know about the Velari Pillow. The Velari Pillow is a comfortable, stylish, convenient solution to preventing all of those aches and pains which accrue due to bad posture. By wearing it or putting it on, it props you up, straightening your back, correcting your posture, alleviating those aches and pains for your back and your neck. The soft, comfortable platform that is provided is a place for you to rest your arms which takes the tension off of your shoulders and in general this pillow provides a very comfortable sitting position which helps you to crochet for longer periods of time who doesn't love that if you would like more information about the Velari Pello, I'll put my link in the description section below for you, and I'll also include my discount code, so if you do decide to get one, you can get it for the best price possible. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you love the Crochet Cottage Washcloth. If you do give it a try, please share your experience with me in the comment section below. Tag me on social media when you share pictures of your washcloths with friends and family. Uh, like this video so that way I know you enjoy enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel so that way I can see you in the next video. Guys, I hope you have the very best day and I'll see you very soon. Bye.